Hello, welcome back. My name's Charlie, and today I'm going to teach you how to make some free fog. By free, I mean it isn't going to cost you any money, but it's also not going to cost you any performance whatsoever. So this is what we're going to end up with. We're going to have fog that works with any style. Um, this works over the top of a cell shaded landscape and stuff. Um, you can see I can adjust the distance of the fog, can change the opacity of it so that it's completely solid and you don't see through it at all. And you can also change the color of it. So as I increase the time of day, you can see that it changes, you know, depending on what the sun's color is, which is fantastic. So let's get stuck into it. It's extremely simple and it only takes a few steps. First thing we're gonna do, we're gonna go up to this top left corner. We're gonna type post and drag a post process volume into the level, which looks like this little cube. You might already be using one. If so, that's great. If you're not, then you're gonna keep that there. You're gonna make a new material here. We're gonna call this post process fog, for example. Uh, and then in this post process volume, we're going to click it. We're going to go to its details and search mat, M-A-T. And you'll see rendering features, post process materials, array, add an element. Then you're going to choose asset reference. Then you're going to choose whatever we just called our thing. So ours was post underscore process fog. And also in our post process volume, we're going to search bound and we're going to click infinite extent unbound. Sweet. So now what you're gonna do is you're gonna open up your post-process material. This is an abridged version of my one. This is my cell shader up here. I have a tutorial on how to make that. So this can be applied after the cell shader, which is handy because if you've ever used a cell shader before, you would know that volumetric effects suck with a cell shader. They just flat out don't work sometimes. So let's just pretend this doesn't exist for a minute and we'll, we'll just work with this part. First thing we're going to do, we're going to get a thing called depth fade. You're going to set the opacity as one. We're going to set the fade distance to, let's say like 20,000. And we're going to get a lerp node, linear interpolate. This is going to be the alpha of the lerp. We're going to plug the output of the lerp into emissive color, the B slot. This is going to be our fog color. And into the A slot, we're going to get scene texture. We're going to go down to the Bottom left. I'm gonna go down to the bottom left and we're gonna grab post process input zero. Uh, and this is gonna go into the A. Now, if we save this and look at our world, we've done it. We're done. That's the effect. You can see, because I have my fog set to be black, it's just, it's black. I could set it to be, you know, red or something. Now we're in the Minecraft nether basically. And you know, this might look super, super familiar to you because this is what video games have been doing for the past few decades. The way we can sort of expand upon this is instead of just using a static color like this, I've opted to use a parameter from a material parameter collection called fog color. If you don't know what a material parameter collection is, it's basically just a collection of parameters which can be accessed in any blueprint, in any material, all at the same time. And if you change the value of it, it changes it for every material that is using it currently. So I have this tied to my time of day system where the color of the light is the same as the color of the fog. So you can figure that out for yourself. Um, and for me, instead of using post-process input zero into the A, I use the output of my cell shader. And if we click save, there you go. So we've got nice cell shaded landscape and we've got fog that is very, very cheap to use. Um, I also use a fog distance parameter from material parameter collection so that in my weather system, I can change the distance of the fog when it gets rainier or if I want it to be a foggy morning or something, I can just change the distance on the fly with no issues at all. And I've also set the opacity to 0.9 so that I can see the sky points, um, even though my game's a top-down game, so it doesn't really matter. It allows you to see things, like, very faintly in the distance, which is pretty cool. So, that's it. That's it. You're done. You've got fog. It works. It's very cheap. And it's infinitely adjustable. 
So as always, if you found this entertaining or educational, make sure that you like and subscribe. It really helps get these videos out to everyone else that needs it a lot more efficiently because YouTube. And if you require any assistance with any of these tutorials or anything Unreal Engine related, then feel free to join our Discord. It's full of super, super helpful people, 24 seven support. And if you want to go the extra mile for us, you can subscribe to our Patreon down below in the schneebly beebly. So with that, I say goodbye. Goodbye.